The Dutch government didn't realize it was handing China a sledgehammer when it revoked ASML's export licenses in January 2025. 72 hours later, Beijing swung hard, not with angry diplomacy, but with silence. No purchases, no repairs, no more playing by the West rules. The world's most advanced chip makers suddenly found themselves locked out, their $15 billion machines inside China now ticking time bombs without support. This wasn't a trade spat, it was a trap sprung early. For years, U.S. sanctions had forced China into a corner, banning EUV lithography machines, blacklisting Huawei, and choking off semiconductor talent. But the Netherlands' final move, canceling even basic DUV tool servicing, crossed a line. Overnight, China's $2.6 billion annual ASML imports became useless, and its factories faced paralysis. Instead of folding, Beijing did the one thing Washington never expected. It walked away from the table and lit the entire game on fire. When the U.S. government under President Trump rolled out sweeping sanctions in 2022 aimed at crippling China's semiconductor ambitions, the goal was clear. Cut off access to advanced chip-making tools, AI accelerators, and foreign talent. The move was meant to stall China's tech rise, forcing it to remain dependent on Western suppliers. But instead of bowing to pressure, Beijing did the unexpected. It turned the sanctions into rocket fuel for its own chip revolution. The numbers tell the story. Between 2022 and 2024, China funneled a staggering $75 billion into its domestic semiconductor industry through state-backed funds. This wasn't just a defensive play, it was an all-out sprint towards self-reliance. Imports of semiconductor manufacturing equipment surged by 33.8% year-over-year in 2024 defying export bans and proving that where there's political will and deep pockets, there's a way. What was originally a 10-year plan to reduce foreign dependence got compressed into a three-year blitz, according to tech policy expert Paul Triolo. But money alone doesn't build a chip industry. People do. China fast-tracked over 50,000 engineers into its semiconductor ecosystem. Many poached from former Huawei and Tsinghua Unigroup Labs. The result? a fragmented but fiercely adaptive sector that's closing the gap faster than anyone predicted. By early 2025, China was already producing seven nanometer chips, something experts had dismissed as impossible without access to ASML's cutting edge EUV machines. Semac, China's top chip maker, pulled off this feat by pushing older DUV lithography tools to their limits using triple patterning techniques once considered too costly and inefficient. Then came the real shocker, Huawei's Mate 60 Pro. When the phone dropped in late 2023, it wasn't just the sleek design that stunned analysts. It was the chip inside. The Kirin 9000S, a seven nanometer processor, was fabricated entirely by SMIC without a single piece of foreign made EUV equipment. Tech Insights confirmed the breakthrough, revealing that SMIC had brute forced its way to advanced nodes using FinFET architecture and AI assisted yield tuning. By December 2024, Whispers emerged that SMIC was already experimenting with 5 nanometer and even near 3 nanometer chips. Proof that China wasn't just catching up but rewriting the rules of the game. None of this is pretty. The workarounds are power hungry, expensive, and far from the efficiency of ASML's $200 million EUV marvels. But as Dylan Patel of Semi Analysis put it, China isn't playing by Moore's law anymore, it's bending it. And with every sanction, the West inadvertently handed Beijing another reason to go harder, faster. The irony, the very restrictions meant to contain China's chip ambitions have instead supercharged them. What started as damage control has now become full-blown disruption. SMIC's domestic market share, once a meager 5% in 2020, jumped to 19.3% by 2024. The message is clear. China isn't just surviving the tech war, it's building an arsenal. And the West is only now realizing it may have underestimated just how far desperation and $75 billion can go. The global semiconductor industry has long operated under one unshakable rule. If you want to make the most advanced chips, you need ASML's EUV machines. These $200 million marvels use extreme ultraviolet light to etch circuits just a few nanometers wide. Technology so complex that for years it was considered impossible to replicate. But China, locked out of buying these machines due to U.S. and Dutch export controls, decided to do something radical. It skipped them entirely. In March 2025, a little-known Shenzhen company called SI Carrier dropped a bombshell. 
It claimed its new lithography tools could achieve sub-7 nanometer chip production using a proprietary DUV-based process. The announcement sent shockwaves through the industry. If true, it meant China had found a way to bypass EUV entirely using older, cheaper, deep ultraviolet DUV machines that were still technically restricted but easier to acquire and modify. Independent verification was still pending, but the mere possibility was enough to signal a seismic shift. After all, Huawei had already proven that the impossible was possible. Months earlier, in August 2023, Huawei's Mate 60 Pro smartphone stunned analysts when teardowns revealed its Kirin 9000S chip, a 7 nanometer processor manufactured entirely by SMIC without any EUV technology. Tech Insights confirmed that SMIC had achieved this by pushing DUV machines to their absolute limits, using a technique called triple patterning. Normally, this method is seen as a last resort, expensive, inefficient, and prone to defects. But in a world where China had no other options, it suddenly became a breakthrough. By December 2024, reports from Nikkei Asia suggested SMIC had gone even further, producing experimental 5 nanometer class chips using quad patterning and AI-assisted yield optimization. The yields were still low and the process was far from perfect, but the implications were undeniable. China was brute-forcing its way into advanced chip making, defying every assumption about what could and couldn't be done without EUV. Industry experts called it innovation under desperation. Dylan Patel of Semi-Analysis described it as China rewriting Moore's law with sheer willpower. The approach is undeniably messy, higher power consumption, lower efficiency, and a reliance on software tricks to compensate for hardware limitations. But none of that matters if the end result works. And for China, that's all that counts. The real question isn't whether China can match Western chip-making finesse. It's whether it even needs to. If the goal is self-sufficiency rather than global dominance, then good enough might be sufficient for now. And with Huawei's secretive Kirin Lab rumored to be pushing toward three nanometer class designs, it's clear that China isn't just adapting to the new rules of the game, it's making up its own. One thing is certain, the West tech blockade was supposed to keep China stuck in the past. Instead, it's forcing the country to invent an entirely new future. And if early breakthroughs are any indication, that future might arrive much sooner than anyone expected. The semiconductor battle between the US and China has never been just about chips. What started as a technical trade dispute has exploded into a full-scale economic war, with retaliatory strikes now hitting everything from rare minerals to academic exchanges. Each move creates dangerous ripple effects across global industries, and ordinary consumers are starting to feel the shockwaves. When the Trump administration blocked NVIDIA from shipping its advanced H20 AI chips to China in December 2024, Beijing responded with a carefully calibrated counterpunch. Within days, China suspended exports of graphite and gallium, two obscure but absolutely vital materials. Graphite is essential for EV batteries, while gallium is used in advanced radar systems and military communications. The impact was immediate and severe. A 16% price spike hit affected industries within two months, according to Reuters. Defense contractors scrambled for stockpiles while electric vehicle makers saw production costs soar overnight. But the conflict quickly spread beyond factory floors. In early 2025, over 410 Chinese researchers were abruptly recalled from U.S. institutions, as reported by the South China Morning Post. These weren't spies. They were critical engineering talent working on everything from materials science to quantum computing. American universities suddenly found key research projects paralyzed, while China gained an instant brain gain of repatriated expertise. The economic pain is becoming impossible to ignore. Dutch firm ASML saw its China revenues plummet 27% year-over-year in late 2024 as Beijing's tech decoupling accelerated. Meanwhile, U.S. tech giants face an impossible choice. Abandon the world's largest consumer market or build separate product lines that comply with competing tech standards. The costs are staggering. Barclays estimates upcoming iPhones could hit $2,300 if Apple can't source Chinese components. What makes this conflict different from past trade wars is its totalizing nature. This isn't just about tariffs on specific products. It's about controlling the entire technological stack from raw materials to end products. China's recent surge in semiconductor patents, 21,000 filed in 2024 alone, per China's IP administration, shows it's building an entirely parallel tech ecosystem. The most frightening part? This may just be the opening skirmish. 
With China quietly offloading U.S. Treasury holdings and tech firms building Iron Curtain supply chains, we're witnessing the birth of two separate technological worlds. As Chris Miller, author of Chip War, warns, this isn't a supply chain shift, it's a realignment of global power. The chips are just the first domino. Now the entire structure of global trade is starting to wobble. China's semiconductor blockade against ASML and TSMC wasn't just a retaliatory strike. It was the opening move in a much larger play for technological sovereignty. By cutting off foreign suppliers, Beijing isn't just insulating itself from future sanctions. It's constructing an entirely self-contained tech empire where every chip, algorithm, and device answers to Chinese standards. The implications stretch far beyond factory floors. They reach into the smartphones in our pockets, the cars on our roads, and even the data in our digital lives. The numbers tell a story of staggering ambition. In 2023, over 85% of China's high-performance chips were imported or made by foreign firms. Just one year later, that number had dropped below 60%, according to the China Semiconductor Industry Association. This isn't incremental progress. It's a wholesale reinvention of supply chains. Huawei designs the chips, SMIC manufactures them, and Changxin Memory handles the packaging. The entire process now happens within China's borders, free from Western interference. But sovereignty comes at a cost, and consumers worldwide are about to feel it. Analysts at Barclays warn that escalating tech tariffs could push the smartphone prices up by 41% in the next 18 months. An iPhone 16 Pro Max might soon retail for $2,300 if Apple can't access Chinese-made components. The same inflationary pressure will hit electric vehicles, smart home devices, and even medical equipment. The era of cheap, globally sourced tech is ending, replaced by a fractured market where buyers must choose between competing ecosystems. Privacy is the next battleground. U.S.-made chips fall under the jurisdiction of the CLOUD Act, giving American authorities access to data stored on servers worldwide. Chinese chips, meanwhile, operate under Beijing's cybersecurity laws, which mandate backdoors for state surveillance. As Alex Capri of the Heinrich Foundation puts it, consumers won't just be choosing between brands, they'll be choosing between surveillance regimes. By 2026, 87% of connected devices globally will rely on components from either U.S. or Chinese supply chains. Neutrality won't be an option. The most ominous development, however, is China's quiet financial maneuvering. While the world focuses on chips, Beijing has begun offloading U.S. tech-linked assets and treasury holdings in strategic batches. This isn't just about escaping dollar dependence. It's about weaponizing capital flows. If the chip war was Act 1, Act 2 might see China trigger a financial quake that rocks Wall Street, pension funds, and mortgage rates. The ultimate goal, a world where China doesn't just compete with Western tech, it replaces it. With 21,000 semiconductor patents filed in 2024, a 34% annual increase, and a target of 70% self-sufficiency by 2028, Beijing is building a parallel technological universe, one where the rules from 5G standards to AI ethics are written in Mandarin. The West assumed it could cripple China's tech rise with sanctions. Instead, it may have handed China the blueprint for domination. Who do you think will come out on top? China's homegrown chip empire or the West's tech blockade? Drop your predictions in the comments and don't forget to smash that like button if you want more deep dives on the hidden battles shaping our future. Hit subscribe and turn on notifications because this Silicon Showdown is just getting started.